In this video, we're going to be looking at part one of how to create ourselves a trading card. Now, the trading card we're going to be making today is for any sports man or woman of your choosing. I'll be using Greg Inglis as an example today, but you can do a picture of your favorite sports star, or you can even do a picture of yourself. We will be making it in Adobe Photoshop CC, so pop on over to Photoshop now, and we will get started. Let's pop up to the file menu first of all and make ourselves a brand new document. Make sure you get the dimensions I've got written in here. It will be 8 by 10 inches. Our resolution will be set to high quality at 300 pixels per inch. And our color mode will be CMYK color. That's meaning it is ready for print. We will leave it in 8-bit format for now. Click OK once you've got all those settings changed and you'll end up with a white canvas on your page. Now the first thing we need to do is get our rulers turned on. You can see around my page I've got some rulers up the top and down the left hand side. To turn those on quickly, or turn them off quickly, is the Control r shortcut. So just press Control r and you will see your rulers appear on your page. What I'd like you to do with those rulers is click and drag from the top ruler and drop it onto the top of your canvas and you'll see a blue line appears that runs across the top of your canvas. Do the same for the bottom of your canvas. Just drag a ruler and snap it on to the bottom of your canvas. Same with either side. So drag the side rulers on and snap them on the left and right side of your page and you'll end up with something looking like this. Now the reason we're bringing these rulers in is because we're going to expand our canvas ever so slightly by three millimeters on each side. And the reason we do that is we're going to make a bleed section. And the bleed section is a little bit of extra room around the outside of our trading card for when we print it out. And when we cut it out on the piece of paper, either using scissors or whatever cutting tool we've got on offer, if we ever so slightly miss our cut line, we've got a little bit of extra color around the outside that will cater for our mistakes. So let's go up to our image menu and change our canvas size. What we need to do is get into millimeters and we need to up the width and the height by six millimeters each. That way we'll have a three millimeter border around the entire document. So the width will go to 209.2 millimeters and the height will jump up to 260 millimeters. And when you click OK you'll see a little bit of extra room now around the outside of your page. So that's known as the bleed section. Okay, and that's that extra little bit of room we've got around our trading card for when we cut out our document. We've just got a little bit of extra color there. If we didn't have that bleed section and we made a mistake cutting out, we'd end up with some ugly white strips around the outside of our page. So it's good to have that extra color there. Okay, the next step is to put in a background. In Curriculum Drive, I have saved some pictures of some grass. You've got your option of two backgrounds. Whichever grass picture you like most, you can use. Either one will be fine. So to put that in you can either drag it in or go to your file menu and place embedded. Okay, I'm going to go with the first grass picture with the white lines on it. I think it looks good. I'm going to place it into my document. Now when it comes in it gives you the option to resize it and that's what we're going to do. And to resize we will hold down shift so it resizes proportionally. That means it doesn't distort in any way. If you weren't holding shift and resize this, you could deform it and it would look quite funny like that. So make sure you hold shift and I want you to stretch it all the way out so it goes over your bleed lines. Okay, once you're happy with it, if you press enter or the little tick at the top, you'll notice that your picture comes back to full quality and hasn't really lost much resolution at all. And that's a good looking background. Speaking of backgrounds, you might want to get rid of this background layer now. It's useless to us now. We've got our grass in as our background, so let's click on this background layer and hit the trash can down the bottom just to remove it. Okay, so far we're looking pretty good. Next thing we'll bring in is a picture of our favorite sports star, or a picture of yourself, if that's what you're doing. So I'm going to go back to the file menu and place embedded. And I'm going to look for a picture I saved earlier of Greg Inglis and I'm going to place that into my document. Whatever picture you use, make sure it is high quality and it's a really big picture. So when you place it in, 
that's not going to look blurry or pixelated. So remember when you place a picture in you can resize it a bit and get it into the position you want. I want you to make it a bit smaller in the outside of your page. I'll just zoom in a bit so you can see what I'm doing. So you can see the blue lines around the outside. I've kept well inside those. When I'm happy with it, I'm going to hit the tick up the top. Okay, that's looking pretty good. You can use your move tool, which is your top arrow over here to move it around. Make sure you've got your show transform control selected up the top. That way you can easily hold shift and resize it again if you need to. That should be pretty much in the center of your page now. Okay, and I'll hit the tick again just to apply those changes. That looks pretty good. Um, what we might do to this picture is pop over to our layers panel here and right click on the picture layer. We're going to go to our blending options. We're going to add in a couple of effects on this picture. The first effect I'd like you to add is a stroke, which is a border. A stroke is another name for a border that will appear around your picture. At the moment it's really little black border. It's hard to see. So change the size of your border here. And the size we might go up to, oh, let's try it about size 30. We'll see what we get. Yeah, I'm going to stick with size 30 pixel for now. You can see that it's got rounded corners on the rectangle. I don't really like that look on a trading card. Since our card has sharp corners, I think our stroke should have sharp corners as well. So we do that by changing the position of the stroke from outside to inside. It cuts into your picture a little bit, but that's okay, and it gives you sharp corners. The color, I'm going to change from black to white, and click on OK. That's a reasonable looking border now around our picture. One other effect I might add is an outer glow. So I go down to the second last option here with outer glow, and I'm going to change the size of my outer glow, which is just here, from 5 pixels all the way up to 80 pixels. And you'll see that your glow appears behind your picture. And that looks pretty nice now. So I'm going to click on OK. That looks good. The next thing we're going to add in is some text across the top of our trading card. So I'm going to pick up my text tool, which is the letter T. I'll make a new layer, which is the button next to the trash can, the piece of paper with the folded corner. And I'll click up the top of my page somewhere. I want you to make sure your font is Rockwell Extra Bold. If you don't like that font, make sure you choose something that is really thick, really big, and looks a little bit sporty. I like the Rockwell Extra Bold for this. My size is going to be about 48 point. You can go something similar. It's got to take up most of this top line up here. In capital letters, I'm going to write in League All Stars. I mean, you can highlight that text if you want and change the color of it if you would so choose. I'm going to actually change the color to a reddish color. I can either do it with my color picker box here or I can hover over the red in Greg Inglis' shirt here and actually click on different shades of red. I'm looking for a reasonably dark red like the one I've got there. So I'm happy with that and I'm going to click on OK. Now you can hit the tick up the top once you've finished applying changes. Use your move tool to move it around a little bit so it's not chopping off anyone's head. If you'd like to play around with some more text settings, you can actually go to your window menu and get your character panel up. In there, some things I like to play around with is the tracking. Okay, it's this little one here with the VA and the stretchy arrows either side of it. If you go into the negatives, it squishes your letters together a bit. It condenses them. But if you go into the positives, it will space them out a bit. So you might want to have a play around with those and see if you can get some nice looking effects there. Okay, that looks good. The next thing we're going to do is add some effects to this text as well to make it look a little bit more sporty. So I'm going to head over to my layers panel here and I'm going to right click on League All Stars, which is my text layer, and I'm going to go back to the blending options. From the blending options, I'm going to add another stroke in. So look for stroke. Now the stroke color I want is white. So I'll click on OK. And size 3 is fairly small. You can barely even see the border or the stroke around my text. So I'm going to change it up to about 15 pixels. 
and now I can start to see that border around my text it looks pretty good like that um, so I'm going to click on OK once I've got that 15 pixel border around my text what I might do as well is add a second stroke so I'm going to go back for another red stroke around that white one to do that you've got to go back over to your text layer here and right click on it and this time you need to convert it to a smart object that's just going to join all those effects together into one layer and now I can right click on that text layer again and go back to blending options and I can add another stroke in now so I'll add my second stroke in I want the color to be the same as the text so I'm going to click up in the text there to select that same red color and the size of that oh, probably doesn't need to be changed much from 3 pixels if you want you can maybe up it a little bit to 5 pixels I wouldn't go much bigger than 5 pixels and click OK if I zoom in a bit now you can see my text has a pretty cool looking effect on it, it looks quite sporty it's just red text with a white stroke and then a further red stroke added around it I think that looks pretty good so that's part one of making your trading card make sure you watch the second video to see how we finish it off